welcome um, back to the School of Architecture at University. Uh, this is a bit of an experiment. We've uh, done these um, uh, events in the past uh, on gone to Texas. Uh, and we thought because it got later and later uh, uh, th that we would try it this way. So uh, we'll see how it works. Good. Um, like um, you, uh, I'm sure you uh, went to some interesting places uh, this summer. Uh, I uh, visited um, for the first time Croatia and Montenegro and um, Albania and then uh, the uh, east coast of Italy in Bari and Perugia, which I hadn't visited before. And it's a very uh, uh, interesting part of the world because of its architecture and its history. Uh, but one of the reasons I was interested in going is um, one of the uh, things that um, distinguish uh, our faculty from uh, other faculties of uh, architecture is that uh, most of us are involved in real projects, including myself. And a few years ago, I worked with a Canadian firm uh, called IGI, uh, IBI Group and um, uh, prepared this uh, plan for one of the national parks in Montenegro. So I became very curious about uh, Montenegro. My role, I didn't get to go to Montenegro then, but my role was essentially determining uh, where various land uses could go in the park. And one of the more interesting parts of that is we uh, designed ski runs. Um, and the, the challenge was there was uh, a lot of minefields left over from the uh, Civil War. And uh, needless to say, minefields and skiing aren't exactly compatible. So we had to figure out ways to do away with the minefields. So when I got back from Montenegro, I called um, my colleagues up in Toronto and said I finally got to visit Montenegro. And they said, well, that's good news uh, because um, the, uh, after we prepared this plan, uh, the politics of Montenegro changed. There was a lot of Russian money flowing into uh, Montenegro at the time. And so they turned away from the sort of strategy that we were part of. Uh, but now the Russian money is sort of dried up a bit. And uh, they elected a new prime minister, and she is very green. And uh, so we're revitalizing the, the plan and moving ahead. Uh, maybe one of the biggest uh, news items at the university is we have a new president, uh, Greg Fenvis. And Greg, uh, I know well. He was our former provost. And before that, uh, Greg was the dean of the Cockrell School of Engineering. Uh, he's a structural engineer. Uh, he's an expert on um, seismic activities and uh, building structures in uh, areas that are highly prone to um, earthquakes. He's going to give his state of the university um, address in a few weeks, uh, accompanied uh, afterwards by his inauguration. And we'll get a sense of where uh, Greg will be taking the university and leading the university. Uh, I expect a very strong emphasis on uh, undergraduate education and how undergraduate education is delivered in a research university. Uh, I expect um, that there will uh, be a, a big emphasis on things like making spaces, uh, maker spaces. Uh, so, um, we look forward to his uh, tenure as president. And one of the uh, first uh, things that landed um, on his desk after he became president is what to do with uh, this fellow, a nine foot bronze statue of Jefferson Davis. Uh, so Jefferson, uh, so uh, President Fenvis formed a, a task force. I was a, a member of that task force, so uh, I spent um, some of the time when I was going through Croatia, Montenegro, and Albania on email and, and um, conference calls with uh, my other members of the task force, uh, trying to uh, get through uh, various ideas, uh, including replacing, my favorite was replacing Jefferson Davis with Gandhi. Um, 
Uh, and and the, the person who did it all, had a drawing of Gandhi and what it would look like and everything. Uh, we, did go, we didn't include that as one of our recommendations. Uh, but uh, as you all know, uh, last weekend, last Sunday, uh, Jefferson Davis and uh, Woodrow Wilson were removed. Uh, they will, uh, Davis will go to the Briscoe Center uh, for the study of American history. And uh, the Campus Planning Committee, which I'm the chair of, will help determine where we put Woodrow Wilson. Uh, at the beginning of the year, uh, there are a number of activities, uh, such as a reception for new faculty uh, at the university uh, in the president's office. And uh, this is uh, me meeting with the interim dean of communications, uh, welcoming new faculty. And one of uh, someone who's joining us this fall is uh, Bob Yarrow. Uh, Bob is uh, really one of the most important city and regional planners in the country today. He um, uh, was the former, uh, for 25 years, the director of the Regional Plan Association of Greater New York City. Uh, he's also a professor of practice at the University of Pennsylvania. And uh, his studio is gonna focus on um, the future of the Hill Country. Um, also, um, to highlight a couple of the other studios, um, I'm, I'm playing favorites here because um, I have a personal con connection or I'm just fascinated by the studios. Uh, we're going to return to Beijing, and uh, the reason why I'm partial to this one is I co-taught the studio the last time we did it, uh, and, and unfortunately I'm not doing it this time, but Wilfred Wang and uh, Zheng Feng Yang and uh, uh, Gabrielle Montemayor are teaching the, the, the Beijing studio. We're cooperating uh, with Chinhua University in Beijing as well as uh, a school of architecture in Barcelona, Spain. So I think it's very uh, exciting uh, studio. It's interdisciplinary. Uh, and then there's the Badlands studio. Uh, I should have probably put Bruce Springsteen as a uh, a soundtrack or something that behind the Badlands. We received a, a very generous grant from the National Science Foundation to work uh, on the um, uh, Badlands National Park. Uh, it's being led by, the studio is being led by Michael Holleran uh, and Benjamin uh, Sevilla um, 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 uh, Studio. And um, it's um, a, uh, I think a really interesting look at a cultural landscape. And we're working uh, with uh, uh, the Lady Bird Johnson Wildflowers uh, Center on that um, 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 studio. And speaking of uh, the Wildflower Center, um, the, um, they were jointly administrated by both the College of Natural Sciences and the School of Architecture until Monday, or Tuesday, and now they, they are uh, completely part of the School of Architecture. Uh, one of the things happening at the Wildflower Center is the um, um, CITES uh, project. Uh, CITES is a 10-year effort to basically create lead for the outdoors. Uh, this summer, we sold um, ownership of the CITES system to what's called the GBCI. GBCI is an outgrowth of the U.S. Green Building Council. It used to, GBCI used to stand for the Green Building Certification Institute, and they changed their name to the Green Business Certification, Inc. Uh, so sites projects are now, uh, you can get certified uh, like LEED projects. So for many of the uh, students, I think it's gonna be a great opportunity to um, 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 uh, change uh, practices in site design. Uh, we're also pleased to have uh, Vince Snyder back. Uh, Vince uh, spent uh, last year at the American Academy in Rome, and uh, he returned about a week ago. Uh, also uh, in Rome at the same time as uh, Professor Snyder, 
Uh, there were two of our most uh, illustrious alumni, uh, Craig Dykers and Elaine Moler Molinaire, of course, the founders of Snohetta. Uh, they were there, uh, uh, Craig as a resident and uh, um, Elaine as a visiting artist. Uh, this is their studio. Uh, it's, it's Elaine's drawing on the left of a horse head. And you can just sort of see the working space uh, at the American Academy. Um, in a couple of weeks, I'm going back to Rome uh, with Mirka Benish and Larry Dahl. And we're taking, there'll be about 30 of us. Uh, and we're going to be um, uh, with a support group of the school called uh, the Friends of Architecture, uh, looking at uh, uh, Rome. We're going to uh, join the student group, the Europe group that's uh, there now, uh, for a day while we're there as well. Uh, the faculty keep uh, uh, winning awards. Uh, this is one that uh, Clay Odom and uh, Corey Beeg uh, recently won. Uh, it's uh, part of the Florida International University Emerging Architects Initiative. It's a program that targets young architects uh, 15 years, uh, under 15 years after graduation. Uh, it's in a Bernard Schumi uh, building, and they'll build this installation uh, later this year. Uh, Corey Big also won uh, this project. Uh, it's a local project, a design competition called Field Constructs. Um, it was a competition organized by, among others, Professor uh, Igor uh, Siddiqui. Uh, also, Elizabeth uh, Danzi and John Blood, just I think yesterday, uh, their Texas Society of Architects um, um, won a TSA Studio Award for Unbuilt Project. Uh, this is their uh, St. Peter and Paul Chapel here in, uh, in Austin. Uh, the Longhorn Network, uh, I think many of you know, the university has its own um, TV network, and part of the proceeds from the, that network uh, go back to university, uh, to academic purposes. And within the school, we received uh, $500,000 uh, from the Longhorn Network to fund a professor of practice. Uh, the catch is we had to match that $500,000. Uh, we've been working away very steadily with that, that fundraising. Um, and uh, good news is we got an uh, anonymous $250,000 uh, commitment this summer, so we're $79,000 uh, short. Uh, we're pretty confident we'll finish that, and we'll have, uh, by this time next fall, uh, we'll be able to select uh, a professor of practice. We also are competing in um, the Solar Decathlon, and um, the uh, Solar Decathlon is um, a competition. Uh, 20 schools of architecture and engineering were uh, selected from across the country. Uh, and um, the, basically, we built and designed a house over the last couple of years, raised the money for it. Um, it's being led by uh, uh, Michael Garrison with Petra Lytle and Adam uh, Pyrick here in the um, uh, School of Architecture. Uh, we're partnering both with the Technical University of Munich um, and our old friend Werner Lang in Munich, as well as the um, uh, Krakow School of Engineering. Uh, it's, um, we'll be moving the house to Southern California in about three weeks. Um, we've already beaten two of uh, the 20 schools. Um, and I. I was told not to call Yale or um, Stanford wussies. Um, but, but, and I'm, if any of you went to Yale or, or, or Stanford, I'm very sorry. We wanted to really beat Yale and Stanford. And we've already beat them because they didn't make a couple of the deadlines and dropped out. So, um, so there's 18 of us left. And, and uh, I, I'm sure we'll do well in that competition. A lot of, uh, several of you in the audience I know worked on this. It's a lot of work over a long period of time. I think it actually should be called the Solar Marathon rather than the Solar Decathlon. Um, also, um, um, in 
faculty publication area, uh, Wilfred Wang or, uh, guest edited an issue of ANU, uh, one of the most important architecture journals uh, in the world. Uh, he did it on the, uh, focused on the Kimball Museum in Fort Worth. Uh, Larry Speck wrote an essay. Uh, it was, uh, I understand, sold out faster than any other ANU uh, in history. Uh, the real accomplishment, beautiful publication. Uh, our faculty are publishing uh, books uh, at a pretty rapid rate. This is one of my favorite book covers ever. Uh, it's Sarah Lopez's uh, Remittance Landscape. Uh, it's a, uh, a replica of the Statue of Liberty in a courtyard of a Mexican uh, house. Uh, the, the man who built the, uh, this courtyard and this house uh, put his mother's face on the Statue of Liberty. So that's uh, a, a, a homage to his mother. Um, Fernando Lara co-wrote this very really important book on uh, modern architecture in Latin America. It's gotten terrific reviews so, so far. Uh, and gosh, Chris Long is, is a publishing machine. Uh, Chris published two books last year. Uh, the one on the right about Lus, uh, I don't understand that much German, but it's a pretty racy book. Uh, and it's gotten some, uh, some really interesting reviews. Um, and it basically is about uh, a darker side of Lus. And of course, uh, David Heyman's uh, nonfiction book, uh, My Beautiful Austin. It's, a, it's about a fictional uh, Austin architect named David uh, who works with clients in Austin, Texas. Um, the Center for American Architecture and Design um, um, continue to publish uh, really important uh, books. Uh, this is one of the recent books, Architecture and Music, Music and Architecture. Um, also, we continue to raise money for Battle Hall. Um, it's about a $70 million project. It includes uh, the renovation of Battle Hall, the, um, um, re uh, the fixing some very serious fire safety and ADA issues. We're also going to renovate um, the West Mall office building and turn it into um, more of a maker space, better studios, uh, our studios there, uh, also classrooms. Uh, and meanwhile, I, I continue to be involved in a lot of campus um, projects. Uh, this is one where the footers went in the other day. Um, the, there's a, uh, a part of the ca overall campus plan, uh, there was a bridge associated with the BELO uh, building. I didn't worry too much about it because there wasn't any money, but then a donor came forward and uh, donated uh, money for this bridge and it looked a little bit like a, not a little bit, it looked a lot like a gerbil tunnel uh, originally. And we convinced the architect to uh, interview the two best uh, bridge designers in the United States and we ended up with um, uh, the um, Rosellis and partners from uh, Boston and Miguel Rosales uh, uh, um, designed a bridge. Uh, it's starting construction now. Uh, and I think it's going to be anything but a gerbil tunnel. It's going to be a very uh, beautiful addition, I think, uh, to uh, the university. Uh, we were supposed to start construction on Speedway Mall this summer. It got delayed until now. Um, so starting very soon, uh, Speedway will be completely transformed. Uh, this is the time schedule, and you, you can't, it's kind of difficult to read, but the part in red, which is uh, from 21st up to uh, 23rd about, or about where the uh, East Mall is, will be the first phase, uh, and it's about two years will be, um, the, the mall will be under uh, construction, but a very transformative uh, uh, part of converting um, the middle of the campus into a real campus and not a leftover road and parking lot. And that's gonna be anchored by this building uh, designed by Overland Partners. It's a, a, an installation by Ellsworth Kelly um, and it will be between 
the uh, two existing Blanton buildings. Uh, there's actually more trees there than this drawing uh, indicates, but uh, you get an idea. And if we look across campus, uh, there's architecture everywhere. There's a lot of buildings going up. Uh, I think we probably have more cranes at the moment than almost any campus uh, that I'm aware of. Uh, a lot associated with the, um, the new medical school. This is the first building of the medical school itself. This is the self um, uh, facade. It was designed by uh, Larry Speck of our faculty. Um, and this is what it looks like from uh, the other side. And uh, mentioning Larry Speck, we have these four guys. Um, uh, up, it's uh, Michael Garrison, uh, Michael Benedict, uh, Larry Speck, and Larry Dahl. Uh, all four of these guys, you probably recognize them more like this uh, than what they look like in, in the 70s. <laughs> um, but these uh, four uh, professors who have played a really instrumental part of our school uh, all came in 1977, and on November 20th, we're going to have a fiesta to honor uh, these four gentlemen and their, their longtime service to school. We're going to have a, it's going to be a party, and we're going to have a good time. Um, so, uh, again, uh, Michael Garrison, Michael Benedict, uh, Larry Speck, and Larry Dahl. Uh, we also have been continuing to refine and work on the graphic identity of the university. And the, uh, designed by Herman Dial, who's a graduate of the School of Architecture. And her, uh, Herman's task was to create an academic logo as strong as the Longhorn was for athletics. So what he did, what Herman did and his team, was abstract the uh, seal of the university. Um, and the seal uh, is present uh, everywhere on campus. Um, and then developed a graphic system um, like uh, this that can be used. I think the, the, the sort of idea of Texas architecture is a very strong image uh, and one that uh, we'll be continuing to implement. Okay, the year ahead. Uh, just look at two things. One, not so pleasant. The other one, more pleasant. Um, as many of you know, uh, the state legislature adopted uh, a law that will allow uh, a year from now uh, uh, licensed gun owners to carry guns on campus. Now this isn't um, the open carry uh, option which was debated and defeated, uh, but uh, we are now faced with the prospect of what, how do we implement this? Um, and the, the president has formed a task force. Uh, there's gonna be a lot of opportunity for you all to uh, give your opinion. Uh, and I would urge you, if you have uh, thoughts about campus carry, that you uh, weigh in uh, on it. Um, one of the consequences of campus carry is a very, very prescriptive signage uh, uh, mandate. And believe me, the signage that's mandated is not as elegant as uh, what Herman Dial would uh, design. It's pretty uh, offensive in itself. And one of my concerns is uh, the, the negative impact it'll have on buildings across campus and the campus landscape, in addition to just the whole idea of guns on campus uh, um, in, in, in itself. Uh, on a more optimistic and positive note, uh, campus carry. Uh, but, but in, in, in contrast to capital carry, campus carry, uh, we, um, the faculty, met uh, last week in our retreat. And one of the mandates we have going forward is to increase our dual degree uh, programs. And so we're going to be working on that this year. And what do I mean by dual degree programs? At the undergraduate level, uh, making it possible, for example, for an architecture student to get a minor in, say, landscape architecture or interior design. Uh, for an undergraduate interior design student to matriculate into the Master of Architecture program, or uh, a BSAS student to matriculate into the Community and Regional Planning program. 
Uh, at the graduate level, um, many uh, other schools of architecture uh, offer dual degrees in uh, architecture and landscape architecture, or architecture and community and regional planning. Uh, so we're committed to uh, looking uh, at degree, uh, joint degree and dual degree possibilities. Uh, and I would urge students to, if you have, if you're interested in these kinds of prospects, to let your faculty know, let me know, and uh, we will move that ahead. Uh, with that, I would like to invite um, the three associate deans to come forward, and we're, we're available uh, for uh, question and answers uh, until we have uh, ice cream. So uh, uh, introduce uh, Michael Oden, Elizabeth Danzi, and Juan Moreau. You guys can sit wherever you want. I, we're gonna... Do we have any uh, questions? <laughs> I, I would ask you three, what are, uh, you, why don't you explain what parts of the university or the school you're responsible for and what uh, you'd like to accomplish this year? I'm the uh, associate dean for undergraduate programs. I'm the associate dean for undergraduate programs and uh, as, uh, uh, as a goal for the undergraduate uh, curriculum committee, the UCC, for, for the year, one of the things that we are carrying from the last year, uh, working groups, uh, we esta established a model to work on the UCC and uh, the GSC architecture through working groups, which is a great way to have more involvement from the students, and we're developing a way to make sure that we have uh, that involvement from the students. One of the working groups that we had last year was related to a uh, possible uh, re revision uh, to the studios in the undergraduate sequence, and that kind of grew into more complex issues. We realized that it touches a lot of things in the curriculum, so we didn't get to any kind of conclusion through the working groups that looked at this issue, so we're going to take it on again this year and, and we're going to continue developing uh, that proposal and we hope to have uh, the involvement from the students and, and hopeful, we hope to get something approved through the committee uh, and then eventually by the faculty uh, this year. That would be the main goal in addition to the looking at these uh, dual degrees that seems to be a pretty much a school-wide goal. So that would be probably the main goal that we have in the UCC that focuses on the undergraduate education here at the school. Um, I'm Michael Oden. I'm the Associate Dean for Research and Operations, and I sort of oversee the various sort of research activities um, in the school. And also operations means kind of facilities, lights go off, don't call me, but I will t help take care of it, et cetera. Um, so I think, um, you know, as Fritz has uh, delineated, there's a lot of very exciting uh, kind of research and practice activities going on in the school. I mean, my role is to facilitate those, keep them going, get more and better ones the next year, and I'm confident that we're on a really strong trajectory, uh, you know, in our sort of research and project work um, in the school, and so I want to continue that. Um, I do want to continue uh, because we do have a number of, I'm also the director of the Community Regional Planning Program. Uh, we do have uh, dual degrees which have been very, um, um, a very nice addition and I think they're very vibrant dual degrees, Community Regional Planning and Sustainable Design, Community Regional Planning and Urban Design. And uh, so we were talking as Fritz suggested that the a faculty retreat about really expanding the dual degree options for different students and different combinations so I want to work on that. Finally, I really want to work very hard uh, to ensure that we build on and expand the diversity uh, of our student body and of our faculty. Um, I really think 
Um, being a great school of architecture means that we're a school of architecture that really looks like uh, the communities that we work in. Um, so I think we really want to sort of um, revivify our efforts to diversify the faculty and student body. I'm Elizabeth Danzi, I'm the Associate Dean for Graduate Programs. So our graduate programs are architecture, landscape architecture, uh, community and regional planning, uh, what am I forgetting, interior design, uh, sustainable design, there's another one. Urban design. Urban design, historic thank you. And historic preservation. So one of uh, the jobs that I have is to hire adjunct faculty and uh, to bring in reviewers at the end of the semester for final reviews. So we're, I, I'm always interested to know who students are interested in having at, at this school, uh, as well as faculty. So faculty and students both uh, always look for input uh, about who we want to see at the school. Uh, and that's true for the uh, lectures as well. Igor Siddiqui is the chair of the lecture series. Um, I know a lot of you were here on Monday. Uh, that's something new. This year is actually using this room for four of the lectures in the fall and in the spring. So uh, we're very interested to know, I'm interested to know, uh, who you would like to see at the School of Architecture. The, uh, the dual degree programs, I'm very interested in that. Our, our, uh, our school is inherently uh, very diverse in terms of its programs and who's studying here and what's being studied. So we have, I think, organically um, are arranged to, uh, to look at how we might configure uh, degrees at the school. So I'm very interested in that and of course the diversity issue especially in the graduate school and graduate programs I think uh, needs to be uh, to be looked at. I'm going to a Noma fair. This will be the first time we'll be participating in that in October. Uh, so the School of Architecture will be represented there and uh, looking for other opportunities. So um, I think that's I think that's enough for me. Questions? Did that prompt any questions? Uh, yeah. Yeah. Yes, go ahead. So being at one of the top schools of architecture in the nation, there are obviously lots of opportunities here. So how, what would you recommend a student to do in order to maximize their potential to you and distinguish themselves from the future? Would, um, I can try to, re it, it's hard for, so, uh, if I didn't capture this, correct me. Uh, as one of the top schools in, of architecture in the country, how can the student maximize their experience while they're here? Is that it? Good. I'll just make a very brief comment and then turn it, on, turn it over. I would say um, there's lots of things you can do, but one thing I think is really important to do is to get out of your room, in a sense. Um, there are lots of things happening here. Um, Elizabeth mentioned the lectures that, you know, you, you, you tend to really, you know, kind of burrow down in, if you're an undergraduate or graduate. Uh, but you need to take, I would urge to take some time out and really experience things, go to colloquia, go to events and so on. Because you'll really learn sometimes, you know, coincidentally or capriciously, you'll, you'll learn things or absorb an idea that really um, you know, stimulates you. So I'd say get out and really experience. You've got to work hard, but make time to get out and experience things around the school and the, and the university. Yeah, I'll say a few words. It's, uh, the School of Architecture is a small school, but at a large university, very large univer research university. So I would encourage students to, uh, the home School of Architecture is great because it's small, but there are many opportunities university-wide. And, and of course, we're in a city that's growing. There's a lot happening uh, in the city that uh, I think there's a lot of national attention on Austin uh, because of growth and uh, things happening here. So I would, uh, if you can, I would find ways to get involved uh, in, in the city and the region and the state of Texas if you can. So I, I think working with others in other disciplines within the School of Architecture or outside the School of Architecture. We have ties to engineering. For instance, we have faculty who are involved in other schools and departments on campus. I would seek those out. Uh, maybe more than anything, I would um, 
maybe hone and identify what it is you're particularly interested in, what, what drew you to school here, what, what might uh, separate your interests from other interests of other, other students and other people, and, and really look for ways of honing, of honing your, uh, your own your in interest, and find uh, like-minded uh, students and faculty members. Yeah, I mean, I, I agree, obviously, with uh, everything has been said. But you know, in general, I would I would I would, I would recommend to be very open-minded, very very engaged, and and to share what your passions are. And we are trying to in the school have opportunities for students to to share what they are, their research, their work. You know, talk to each other. You know, comment what's going on. If you go to a lecture, you know. You can go on Friday and have a drink, but you can still talk about architecture. That's one of the good and bad things about our school. Designers tend to be designers 24 hours a day. We're interested in issues that can be part of a conversation outside school. So keep that conversation going. But the Goldsmith Talks, for example, that was, were created last year, is a great opportunity for students to just reserve lectures to share with the rest of the school what they're doing, what they're working on. For example, today I saw the poster of the exhibit of the photographs of the Kimball that Donesh, Noah, and who else? Who was the third person? Uh, Kimberly? Okay. Yeah, Katie. So it would be great, for example, if you guys do a Goldsmith talk that you share, you know, with the rest of the of the students. What was the project about? What you know? How you went about doing it? You know, and sharing those things is a perfect venue for that those kind of things. So I would say that we know we're you're very busy with the, all the classes, all the studios. But it's great when you have an ability to share and interact. And so we're looking for more opportunities for students to come together and have shared experiences like these big Jess and lectures to continue those conversations, but for you to also look for other venues where you can share and explain all the other things that are in your head that you are working on. And many times people don't know because you have not had a chance to really open that door for people to come and listen to, to you. And so I'll, I'll encourage you to take advantage of the Goldsmith Talks. Again, Monday and Wednesdays, the idea at 5 o'clock, there are things going on in the school and everybody can participate. And it could be a big lecture here, but it could be a small lecture at Goldsmith Talk that you go and just share what you and your friends are thinking about or working on or what you did in your trip last summer. Like Haley went to Iceland. We'd love to see those photographs. You know, we'd love to see what you thought. And you, you can do it as a, almost like a slideshow that you would do in your house, but you can do it in Goldsmith Talk, and everybody in the school can be invited. And everybody can go, you know, take a break from studio at 5 o'clock Monday and Wednesdays, and there's always something going on. So share and be very open-minded and tolerant. Like Michael said, the many times you don't know. You can go and say, why in the world would we be interested in going to see Haley talk about Iceland? You don't know. You, you, she may have very, I mean, I know she has very good photographs because I've seen them, but uh, she may have a lot of other things that all of a sudden can find a connection to what you are actually doing in the studio that can get you out of a you know, block that you have in your work. You know? So it's very good to be very open, and like a sponge, and try to absorb as much as you can and share as much as you can and have those conversations going. So that's the best, I mean, the best memories you have from school, at least when I look back, are precisely those interactions and those being part of those events, you know, when I was in school, I still remember that. We were commenting that about lectures, and then many times you may not remember what that lecture, what the lecturer said, but you remember how you felt and how you inspired you felt after that lecture. And that's the kind of thing that I think there are a lot of opportunities here that we can take advantage of. So be open and be active. It's a terrific question. You can tell you kind of hit our sweet spot. Uh, this is something we, we really care a lot about. and. Uh, uh, I'll come to the uh, Iceland. Uh, uh, I, I, it was for me between Croatia and Iceland, and I, we kind of flipped a coin and decided to go to Iceland next uh, year. In addition to, um, we invest a lot in the big lectures and also the end of semester juries. And I, I, I would really advise uh, people to go to the uh, all the advanced and vertical studio reviews because we bring in uh, really outstanding uh, jurors uh, and they're meant to be open to anybody in the school. Uh, also, um, there is what's called the Center Lunch Forums, uh, the, the Center for American Architecture and Design, as well as the City Forum that the Community and Regional Planning Program. Uh, the advantage of both the 
Center Forum and the City Forum is you get a free lunch. You just have to sign up. <laughs> Uh, they're great. They usually are works in progress by, uh, in the center forums by the faculty. Uh, the city forums usually bring in uh, really uh, top people from uh, around the state talking about urbanization. Uh, so uh, there's a lot of, see it, whatever those flyers are up, take advantage of them within the school. But as Elizabeth said, uh, it's a big university and there's a lot going on. Um, uh, across campus to take advantage of as well. Question or ice cream? <laughs> I mean, I ice cream is similar to Iceland, I suppose. But, um, going once, going twice, let's go have some ice cream. Yeah. <laughs> 